So as far as I can tell, the only things we have to do left are, oh, why do we have one missing? We seem to have something wrong over here. I'm trying to find, figure out why. We've got the walls on the other sides. Okay, well, let's focus on the service module. Yeah, I'm not too sure why this one's missing. Let's just fix that. Uh, you know what? Let's fix that by copying the one over here. Oh, it's going to make it difficult for me. All right. Uh, because end guns. This is why we don't want end guns because it's hard to like select stuff sometimes. Okay, so I'm just going to copy those. And I'm going to do Shift D. And we are going to... I'm going to separate that as a different part temporarily and I'm gonna go into object mode and I'm going to oh okay well and then I'm going to set origin to center of mass surface and then we're going to move it to the opposite side in the X coordinate so negative okay so then we should have the things and why don't we check the normals while we're here? Well, they seem to be okay. All right, we want them on the inside here. We're never gonna see the opposite side. So we can just merge that with the service module. Oh, yeah, wrong way around. Join, okay. So, backslash and Yes, we can work on the little engines that are the abort engines. I don't think I don't know what kind of detail they have. I haven't seen them stand alone. Uh, we only need to make one, but it has to be tilted, sort of, and that's a whole interesting thing. Basically, as far as engines are concerned, we just start with a tube, and we work from there. It does stick out, so that's not too bad. It's about right. Okay. So, tab, edit, loop cut, loop cut, and we'll make this GG, make this go down, and that'll be our throat. And let's just make that throat with these, uh, select these two, size down. Okay. And then the next loop cut here. Make it about twice the size of the throat is pretty standard. And we'll probably move all those up. Though so since it's the launch abort motor, it has to work at sea level. So its nozzle ratio is not going to be very high. Uh, I just want the points, not the whole things, and we'll just move these up a little bit. That's probably okay. And we'll just give this more dimension. That looks okay. And we'll just sort of add some detail, because I haven't seen this particular engine stand alone. So I'll just do standard stuff, extrude, and then scale up, and actually scale down. I could have confined the extrusion, but we don't really need all the normals right now, though actually they help sometimes. Okay, so it looks like that right now, and I'll sort of add a jacket to it. So just S to scale up and pump it out like that. Okay, and maybe we can bevel a few things. We'll bevel this one. Not so many. I don't really care about the detail too much on it until we actually see it. Or I'm maybe other people have seen it, I just haven't. So I'll do the details later. 
Um, the auto smooth is smoothing that a little bit too much, so let's. Uh, yeah, I think that'll do fine. And then the end of it. Inset. Extrude into it and go like that. But we do know that they're tilted from other images, not this one. Now how much they're tilted, I don't know. But it makes sense for them to be tilted so that they point through the center of mass better. But with their location, I don't know exactly how well they can do that. But let's assume negative 5 in this direction and negative 5 in, or 5 in this direction. So just 5 and we want that to be 0. That's fine. So negative 5 and 5 and then we can move it into the slot and see. And let's try and see if we can get some round numbers for its location. I guess we'll leave it out. Well, we could put 0.95 or something. Okay, it's a little bit longish. And I'll apply scale right now. Okay, so that's... Oh, it's hitting the edge there. I don't want that. Tilt-wise, it makes sense to me. Uh, so, we could have multiple ones and just build it in to the service module, or we could just make them an individual thing and have them placed one at a time. Because Kerbal Space Program doesn't always take to having too many different modules on the same thing. And we're going to have the RCS on here. We're going to have the solar panels on here. Hmm... And then we got the engines. Soul panels and engines, I forget if that's a problem or not. I think we're gonna, uh, we'll make it like this and we'll have it just one unit instead of having four separate ones. We'll make it its own unit. And so we'll apply this mirroring. And it'll just be its own thing. So I'm going to apply the location of it. So it'll be centered at zero, zero. Uh, it won't be that high. I would like actually for it to be centered at a lower point between the engines. And we'll use the 3D cursor for that. We'll say negative three. Okay, and then we'll set origin to 3D cursor. So now their origin is there. And then they'll be their own part like that. And that'll make me feel better. I don't think they gimbal. So, well, let's name it. And these are abort motors. Or engines, really. Abort engines. Now they need a collider. Everything needs a collider. Let's do the colliders, but first let this... I'll just uh, have them be steel. They'll go for steel texture. So they'll share the texture with the other things that are steel. Okay. So, now we are going to save. <laughs> Let's just save and start working on the colliders from top to bottom. So, first the uh, arrow cap at the top, not the arrow cap, just the cap, because uh, we've got something else called arrow cap. We're going to keep the colliders very simple. I don't want this cap to interfere with the any possible docking port. So right at the bottom of it, I'm just not going to have a collider. Now the collider is important for clicking on things. The drag cube can be made from the mesh and Fermi Aerospace Research generally does that. So instead of having all the vertices, we'll have a few. And uh, Okay, I want that. I want that and edit mode. Uh, we'll try and make it somewhat more like the shape. And I'll leave it like that so that it can float above the docking port. Otherwise, if we put a docking port in here and it clips into it, then when it separates from it, it may explode. So we want to be careful about that. And this will have material material. And we'll call this collider C for cap. And I'm just going to make sure that the cap is its parent. Any other details are not relevant, really. Now, 
I told you I don't like doing the aero cabs because we're going to have to do a whole bunch of colliders on it because it has to be around the center. Otherwise, it will clip into something important like the docking port or the parachutes or something like that and then explode. So we cannot have a single collider for the aero cap. And let's just focus on the aero cap and that my new cube here. Okay, we'll go solid. Okay, so the cube is going to be on, and we are using a cube because it's a simple shape and we don't want, you know, uh, colliders with a whole lot of polygons if we can help it. So we could probably make it even simpler. I'll go local to scale in this direction. And we're probably going to have some multiple, either eight or 12 of these colliders on the outside of it. And if I was going to make a pass-through pod, a pod that curls can go in and out of instead of the normal IVA view, basically these uh, wall colliders, like I'm putting on the aero cap here, would go on the entire pod. Because we're doing a normal IVA view for the pod, I don't have to do that for this. It's just uh, it's a little bit of an estimate about how wide we want the bottom and the top right now. But basically we want sort of it half showing and half clipped into the aero cap and then that should be fine. And then we apply location. And that's because we're going to duplicate it and rotate it. But before we do that, we will make sure that it's got the right material and we'll call this Collider A.000 because the program will automatically name the new ones .001.002.003 and that'll be easier for us. So uh, Shift D to duplicate and then let's see what happens when we rotate it. Oh, uh, we should apply rotation as well. So before we duplicate, apply rotation. Okay, now Shift D and rotate. Uh, I think uh, what we see here is that the top might be too small and the bottom too wide. And it looks like we're going for 30 degrees, which means we'll have 12 of them. And we should apply scale as well. So um, let me just, we could also make an array and there's other ways of doing this, but I'll just do it this way. So gonna make the top a little bit wider, bottom a little bit narrower. And we are going to duplicate again. Oh, uh, let's just apply scale. It doesn't matter though, because we're not texturing it at all. But okay. And then we rotate and say about 30 degrees. It, it can have some overlap, it's fine. I mean, it's better than before. I think it'll be okay. So we'll just make more in multiples of 30 degrees. Again, you could do an array, but it actually takes longer half the time. Unless you don't remember your multiples of 30 degrees. Might be helpful. Or you could just type in the previous number and uh, you could just go in here and say plus 30 and it'll do it for you. But we've got all the colliders. We parent uh, get the arrow cap as a parent. And they're all in there. And if you want to, we can also now uh, just set objects, set origin back to the surface just to make it neater so that they don't have their center of, uh, not really center of mass, but they don't have their center at the bottom here, sort of off the part. Okay, so we've got the arrow cap and we press backslash to get the rest of the parts. Uh, now, as I mentioned, uh, for the pod, we can just make a single thing since we don't expect the Kerbals to need to get in. Uh, actually, physically go in, except as an IVA thing. So we are going to add this new cylinder. Sort of scale up. We could have made it the right scale to begin with, but it doesn't matter. Okay, probably something around that size. 
and this we scale down. We probably have too many vertices on this, actually for a nose cap as well. We didn't need so many because I did 72 for, okay, yeah. Uh, we did 72 for the main pod, but we don't need that. So let's just do 24, we'll be fine. And we can just set the radius right away. So that'll be fewer polygons for the collider. For making a pod with a exit hatch and also an IVA view, it is essential that the pod has the collider around 000. So 000, the origin point, has to be within the pod. Uh, so keep that in mind. Okay, and we're gonna call this another material collider. And this time I'm, I'm not gonna name it separately, I'm just gonna say 000. And we are going to make sure that the pod is its parent. Uh, in object mode, not in edit mode. Okay, so now the pod has a collider. Uh, I, I, I think the collider, hold on. Uh, the collider does go all the way down. Uh, it doesn't quite meet this edge. We could make it meet... Uh, no. We could make it match a little bit better. Uh, the colliders have to be convex. That's another catch here. For Kerbal Space Program, they have to be convex colliders. No concavities. So... That is one reason why we had to make the colliders on the arrow cap the way we did with 12 of them. If we could make it concave, then of course we could just make it one collider, but we can't. Uh, Kerbal Space Program will not allow that. And in general, I think it's better not to. Uh, you're going to select hierarchy and focus on that. We can make another collider for this bit. Sometimes if your mesh is sufficiently concave and not complex, you can just use the mesh object as the collider. It's not illegal. Okay, and this I'll just call Collider2 with the dot there, or Collider1. The other one is Collider000. Technically, I think the heat shield would work as one of those standalone colliders, uh, even though it has the steel portion separated off. But we'll make a separate collider for it. And I'll still try to make it simple, but we will add one extra loop here. And it'll be just like that. Okay, so what we're looking at... Well, let's go solid and just focus on this. So that becomes the collider like that. Okay, and Collider H for Heat Shield. And that has to be in object mode when we parent it. If the hatch is really functional, then it's going to have to have a collider of its own, and then the collider is going to have to wrap around it. Uh, that's another pass-through system thing. Okay, well, this trunk can be complicated or it can be easy. Uh, we could just make one collider for it, one cylinder. And I think I will go like that, which would mean that the if there is no collider on a part, on a section, then in Kerbal Space Program, not only can you not click on that bit, you can also not place anything, surface mount anything. So if we, right now, if we take a look at the service module here, and we'll select hierarchy. Uh, I'm thinking of not having any collider on this top bit above this plane here. 
And if we're going to do that, then nobody can place anything on it. And also when they click that part in Kerbal Space Program, they will not be able to pick up the part. They'd have to click down here. But I think it's just worthwhile not trying to, because the heat shield's gonna be in there. And once the service module separates, we are not going to, and I just remembered the umbilical. Um, once the service module separates, if there is a, a solid collider here, then it'll probably explode with the heat shield. So we can't have the two colliders interfere with each other if they're on different parts, which happens when one module separates. So we are probably going to avoid that by just not having any collider in that area. So, we'll make sure it's clear. And then this bottom one, we move up. We'll create nodes for a node for the placement of the engine. So it doesn't matter whether uh, the engines are going to be interfered with by the collider because the engines never separate from the service module. They're never going to be a separate part. So the fact that they're going to be clipped in uh, does not worry me. So we're going to have the collider like that. Collider S for service module. A pod one also needs to be part of pod. Let me clean this stuff up. Okay, now the seats and pod interior parent. Okay, there we go. They're all in there now. But basically what we want is each of these be a separate part that we're going to export from Blender into Unity. So the hatch should be with the pod. The windows should be with the pod. And so what we'll have is one, two, three, four, five, six parts. And you can see the logic behind the parts is that uh, they are either standalone things or stuff that separates, right? So the pod has to be able to separate from the heat shield or the service module or the cap or the arrow cap, so those all have to be separate parts no matter what. Okay, now the engines pose a little bit of a problem as far as colliders are concerned because they're all over the place here, but um, we'll just deal with that. Again, you have to make the collider so that people can click on the thing. So we're gonna make a collider for them. But we don't have to make it pretty. <laughs> I'm not even gonna tilt the collider per se. It's extra to do that. One thing we absolutely can't have is the collider blocking the thrust vector. So I'm gonna move it up a little to make sure that when I place the thrust vector, the collider is not gonna interfere with it. But yeah, right now it's uh, not tilted the same way as the engines, but. I think it's acceptable. Um, since the colliders have to be convex, we can't just mirror it. I'll just duplicate it. And I'm just gonna call this collider E.000. And I'm gonna duplicate. Yep, no, I don't want to move the duplicate yet. So Shift D and then left click to just confirm that. And I'll move it to the opposite X. So we get one there, Shift D, move it to the opposite Y. And then shift D, move it to the opposite X again. Okay, so now we have the four engine colliders. We can make abort engines the parent of that. And so we've got colliders there, colliders there. There's one collider for that. The heat shield has its collider, pod, and service module. So uh, I did not put colliders on the RCS ports, which means that somebody cannot place anything on top of those. I'll just say that that's a rule. Um, I'll do the umbilical. Okay, so I, I don't plan to animate the umbilical such that it releases, but we can put it on anyway. It seems like it's below the hatch. Uh, it's right here. So that's where I'm going to put it. 
you can see the hatch location and the umbilical. So it's a little bit offset, but it's basically right here and it has to extend all the way down to the pod down here, uh, the service module. It looks like a cube to me. And so we're basically going to do it similar to the way we did the RCS blocks. Gonna rotate it so that it's sort of facing the right location. Going to scale in Y. We are in local still. Definitely don't need so much of that. Oh, sorry, I scaled in X first and now scaling in Y. Uh, Lengthwise, just a little bit less, probably. And let's tilt it. Okay, now we are in edit mode. And we are going to create some new geometry. The first thing is it has a bend in it, quite obviously. Uh, right around here-ish. And we will need an edge loop for that. And beyond the edge loop, this edge basically goes straight up and down. And I'm going to move that a little bit lower. This edge in. Well, all the edges in, really. And this a little bit shifted down. The bottom one probably shifted up a bit. So roughly like that, but now of course we are going to use subdivision surface to help things out. It's definitely not that wide. Uh, maybe I'll just bevel. It looks pretty sharp on some edges. It's not quite meeting the pod right now. We're not going to put a collider on it, so even if it clips in, we're not going to worry. Okay, so control B for bevel, and we can sort of make a few more edges there. This edge is also a little bit beveled, but not that much. And this bit is actually pretty straight after that top one. Sort of like that. And then the bottom is beveled. This bit is beveled. And this we can bevel as well. Probably a little bit of beveling on the interior there. It's doing some nasty stuff on that edge though, but... Okay, shade smooth. Use the auto smooth. And it's a white texture, so we'll assign it to that group. I'll just leave it like that. I'm not going to fill around with it. So that is part of the white group. I think as far as modeling is concerned is all I'm going to do for now. Um, again, there's a lot of detail, especially under the arrow cap. <laughs> there's plenty of other detail. I made that part really simple underneath the arrow cap, but... So we're going to call this the umbilical. And yeah, I kept that super simple and we could do a lot more there. I'll just apply rotation as well here. Okay, and that is part of the service module. Okay, so now we were we are going to embark on the texturing portion. We've already done some UV editing, but now we're going to do the rest of it. And we are going to go in order. So the abort engines were steel. Let's keep an eye on the different materials that we have here. We have a lot. We don't have to worry about seat and seat steel because I've already got those dealt with in Unity already. So we just need to, and that's the reason why I pulled those seats in because I didn't want to have new textures. But 
maybe we should just go in order. So heat shield. And the heat shield is its own thing, so we can just unwrap it directly. And we don't want it to be small. We want to make sure it uses as much of the area as possible. And that's pretty good. So it's got sort of, I don't know why it's unwrapping the edge like that. Probably some and gone somewhere, but um, it's okay. And the next one was HRSI, which is the some of the black textures on the pod, like here. And so I'm going to make sure select linked material, tab, all. I'm just going to smart UV project and see if it gives me, I think this is decent enough. They're all little chunks around everywhere and we would have to split up that ring anyway. So, you know, you can see this is the frame of the hatch and the frame around the window. It's about exactly what we would want anyway. So I think it's done a good enough job. So it just hasn't used this area here, but the shapes are such that I, we would have to chop up that those bits even more and I don't want to do that. So that is fine, and we're probably not going to spend too much texture space on that. And so the next one is pod blue, which is the big one, right? That's the entire pod, and now I'll get the biggest physical texture. So again, select linked material, because also the cap and the arrow cap are the same material. Tab A to select all, use smart UV project. I think that's, again, acceptable to me. As far as the stuff is concerned, we'd have to split up the pod a few times. Otherwise, we'd get a weird ring. Yeah, I think that's okay. Uh, we could maybe size down the cap and the arrow cap, relatively speaking, but I think they're about the sizes that we would expect. So, okay. So, next up, pod... Oh, I said po pot interior instead of pod interior. Well, I would like to make sure that the name of the name of the material is correct because the texture is going to be named that too, so it's complicated. Okay, and just in case, I don't think there's anything else that is using that material, but just in case I'll select linked tab, all, that's definitely not what we want. U, let's see what smart UV project does to it. Uh, it's chopped up the interior into four bits, and that's the floor of the interior, and that's base. Uh, there's a ceiling, and um, no, that's the ceiling. I'm trying to figure out what this bit is. So what you can do is, let's just figure this out. Uh, click this button here, UV sync selection, and now what we selected in here becomes selected here, and I'm going to. Go three, select that. Okay, that is the floor. That's the floor. Uh, this is uh, the interior bit over here. Hmm. We don't really see that ever. Well, that's a good point. We, I mean, we're not gonna see that. That's basically where like the life support and such is. I don't want to delete it right now though. The uh, problem is. If I want to put this to other uses, this we've got a little bit of a node thing here that's irritating me. Um, There's not the time to fix it, but I just want that down. I'll leave that be. Uh, probably we could optimize that a little bit more without having those bottom portions that we're not going to see. But for now, I'm le leaving that. Okay, back to UV editing. Actually, we need to do the steel. And, oh, the solar panels, we didn't have a solar panel thing. Solar panel and the radiator. We'll have another material, radiator. Okay, let's just go out and unwrap the radiator. That's, um, yeah, that's about what we're gonna get. Okay, your radiator is done. And solar panel, you, uh, nope, I don't want to resize. You, smart UV project, and that'll be fine for now. And we haven't done the white stuff yet on the service module, so select linked material. That's a whole jumble, and 
these areas here aren't great. <laughs> um, but I will once again leave it be for now. And finally, the steel on the pod. Uh, let me make sure. So that's pod. And then the abort engines also have the same material. So all. Okay. So we've got these sorts of maps. And one way we could do this, if you don't have Substance Painter, is you go into Photoshop, and I'll give an example in the next video, and basically create a single texture that has one section that has the uh, sort of black thruster texture, another section that has the bluish pod texture, another section with the white surface module texture, and another section with a steelish texture. And then you just maneuver these into the right location. And then you will use image texture here and just have the same texture for all of them. Or you could use two or three different texture files and assign them here. You'll click image texture and open the file that you want to use. And so I'll show that in the next video. But in reality, I am going to use uh, Substance Painter to do the one, the version I want. So anyway, but we've got it UV unwrapped in the least difficult way possible, though not as optimized as you might want it. But anyway, with that, uh, we have completed the modeling part of this, and we will mainly be turning to texturing in the next video. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, these videos. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.